Um, hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at the most repeated questions for chapter, oops, we're coming, let me make this, yeah, for chapter 7, which is the system life cycle. Now this is a really important chapter because most of the important questions come from there and almost every single paper has a question on this chapter because it's one of the biggest chapters as well. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, you definitely know, need to know the difference between parallel, between parallel, direct, and phased implementation. And we also have pilot, pilot implementation, okay? So let's look at direct. So direct is when the old system is stopped overnight and then replaced immediately with the new system. Okay. So you're first using your old system and then suddenly one night you have to change your whole system and shift to the new system. Now the advantages are that the benefits are immediate. That means that as soon, since you're no longer using your old system and after one night directly, you're now using your new system. So you're the benefits of it are immediately being used by you. The costs are reduced because only one system is running. As we look at the other types of system, you'll see that the costs of them are really high. But then direct uh, change of its cost is really low because only one system is running at one time. Less possibility of a malfunction because if you're going to be switching the system overnight, you need to make sure that whatever you have done, like whatever you're going to change is properly, like going to function and everything. So uh, there's less possibility of malfunction since you test everything efficiently and properly before changing it. However, disadvantages is that may be disastrous if the new system fails. So now, even after doing all your testing and everything, even if after all that your system fails, then the disadvantage is that you cannot go back to your old system or the data is lost because you are now using only one system, right? So that was about direct. Then let's move on to parallel. Parallel means the old system and the new system are running side by side, okay, for a time until the new system takes over. Now, there are various reasons for this, okay. You're, you can use parallel maybe when you're not sure that the system is very accurately um, working, when you want to give the workers in your organization some time to adjust to both of them. So, multiple reasons are there. So, it's like, so at first you're using your old and then you start using your old and new for a short amount of time until let's say your workers get used to that system and then you switch back to the new, switch to the new. So that's how parallel works. Advantages is that even if the new system fails, the old system is still there for you, for you to use. And then it's possible to train your staff gradually. Okay. So now you can train your staff and then switch on it whenever they're all ready. So it's more expensive than direct because extra stuff is needed. So now you have to enter data in the old one and then in the new one. That's why it's also time consuming and expensive because now the staff has to do this and this. Okay, let me move on to phase two. Phased is when you have the old system and then the new, uh, and then you still have some part of the old system in one, this thing, like you're implementing the system part by part. Okay, so over here it says, let me change this thing to let's go with green. Okay. Only one part from the system or the new system is introduced when it's proved when it's proved to work satisfactory, then introduce next part until it's fully replaced. So you have your old system, so you implement part one in the whole organization. You see that okay, everyone is working with it, it's great. Then you implement part two. If it's an if there's an error, you work on it and then you implement part three. So you're implementing it in phases. Okay. That's why it's called phase changeover. Advantage is that if a part fails, it can go to fail. Um, so you can if a part fails, then you know that if part two failed, you can go to part two and then fix it. So you know where it failed. So you can go to the failure point. Possible to ensure the system working properly before expanding. So you can check whether the system is properly working before moving on to the next phase, right? Then some disadvantages is that it's more expensive than direct because each phase will have to be evaluated separately. Also time consuming because each part will be evaluated. Now, what IGs people really like to do is they like to confuse student with parallel and phased. Okay. Because they are a bit similar, most students usually get confused. Okay. So, um, make sure you know the advantages, disadvantages and how they work for both of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh my days, my voice. Sorry. 
then you need to know the types of verification. So first verification, uh, let me choose a good color. It's a way of preventing errors when data is copied from one medium to another. Therefore, there are two ways for verification. Now, make sure you know this. You need to know this because I still remember I was in gradients and then this question came and then they asked me what are the types of verification and I couldn't answer because I didn't know because most people don't read the textbook and personally I don't as well. But this is something that's at the back of the textbook which you have to know and read. But no worries. The first one is double data entry and the second is visual entry. So you can have double data. Double data entry is basically data is entered twice using two people and it's then compared or data is entered twice. The computer compares both of them and checks for any irregularities. Uh, so yeah, then we have visual checking for errors by the person who is entering the data compared to the uh, enter data with the original document. So this one is like when you're entering the password, it's like enter password and then re-enter the password. Then the computer will check if they, both of them match and then you'll be able to move ahead. So that's double data entry. Visual data entry uh, or visual check is basically you have entered your document, uh, your password or whatever. You go to the original document where you have all of these. You check what's written here. You check what's written here. If they both match and then you proceed, right? So methods of implementation, we have already done this, the direct, okay, pilot, yeah. So now this is where I was talking about pilot, okay, uh, let's go yellow, I guess. So pilot is when the new system introduced in one branch or part of a company before introduced to the whole company. So let's say we have an organization, or um, let's say organization X, and it has its branches in, let's say, New York, and then other, this one's. So with pilot, what we do is that you'll only implement this in this branch of the X uh, organization X. If it's successful, then you'll come and implement it over here. Then you come and implement it here and then you eventually implement it here. Okay, so that's how pilot works. So you have your old system. Now you have your old system running in the other branches and your new system in the new branch. And then once uh, all of them get the new, this thing, new system, then it completely changes to the new. So advantage is that if the new system failed, only one part is affected. So even if it failed, only this part is affected. The others can still work. Possible to train staff in only one area. The cost will be less than parallel. Okay, because over here, or okay, even if you are using two over here, the the cost increases only over here. The cost remains the same. But in parallel, the cost increases across all the branches. That's why it's less cost yet than parallel. Disadvantage, it will take time to implement across all departments. Now you see that the disadvantage, advantages of pilot, uh, phased, and then pilot, phased, and then parallel, they are quite similar. So make sure you really master this because IDs can really test you on these. Direct changeover, you also need to know that. They do ask that, but it's th these three that uh, students really get confused with. So make sure you know that. Then we have technical documentation and user documentation. Now, these are part of the documentation stage. Okay. Now, you need to know some of these. Okay. Like, you don't definitely know, need to know every single one of them, but you need to know the ones that are common in user and the ones that are common in technical, and then ones that are unique for user and then ones that are unique for technical, right? So, user documentation, you need to know how to load, install the software, how to save the files, how to print, how to add, delete, or amend records, the purpose of the system. Okay, now be careful. Uh, be, uh, watch this one because the purpose of the system, I'm sure, will also be for technical. Uh, yeah, see, there you go. Purpose of the system. Okay, then limitations of the system also here. Limitations. Then screen layout or print layout. I think this is here, but I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't think it's here. So yeah, screen layouts, hardware requirements, software requirements. These also need to be in uh, technical documentation. Sample runs with actual data. I think this should also be in technical. Then error handling, troubleshooting, how to log in, log out, tutorials, error messages, glossary. Then you also have, okay, yeah, it's over here. FAQs or frequently asked questions. Then we come on to technical. You need to know, personally, just pick like three or four and then know them instead of memorizing every single one of them. I usually go with program listing and then software, flowchart, program flowchart, and then program language. And then you can go with anyone that you like. So yeah, so you have program listing, program language, program flowchart, system flowchart, 
purpose of the system, limitation input for more hardware software requirements, minimum memory requirement, bugs in the system, list of variable file structure, sample runs, validation, meaning of error message output formats. So basically, it's something that you have to like kind of memorize, not something that I can really explain because you just need to know them. You don't have to explain or anything, right? So then explain what other testing should have been carried before implementation so the whole now this is also a really common question that comes up okay so pay close attention so before implementing the whole system right the whole system should have been tested the operator should have tested the meet uh okay looks like this is a different specific question that has linked to the like the question will decide the answer over here so I'm not so sure about the bill and the operator, but I know that linkages between modules should be tested. The system should be tested module by module. So module by module testing. So then modules should be tested individually. Modules, all the modules should be tested together. The system should be tested together. Any error should be reported and fixed. So these are some of the things that you can answer over here, right? Methods of researching and the current system. So this is part of the analysis. Analysis stage where you are observing the users, interviewing questionnaires and examination of the existing documents. Now, also really important. You need to know the advantages and disadvantages of this, 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 and this. Over here, it looks like I have only interviews because it's probably the most common one. But make sure you know the other ones. I don't have it here or else I would have explained them. But no worries, maybe a different video. So interviews, this method uh, uh, okay, involves one-to-one -one question and answer between the analyst and the employee. Uh, and good if the analyst... Oh, okay, it's good if the analyst wants to go deeply into specific aspects of the existing system. So in interviews, the analyst can ask the employees what is wrong with the system, how does it work and everything. So you can go deep into the questions and then they can ask follow up questions and everything. So it's open opportunity to motivate interviewee to give open and honest answers to the analyst open for more feedback possible to modify so you can modify your questions and ask new questions you're not predetermined to questions like you are in questionnaires then this advantage is time consuming because the more people you're interviewing the it's the more spend uh, more time it spends and you have to interview everyone individually so that's very time consuming expensive because the analysts will be taking money from the organization uh, for the time that he spends. So the more time it spends, the more expensive it is. And the interview cannot be anonymous. You need to know who you're interviewing, that you need to know who you're being interviewed by and all that. So that's all for this chapter. I will start with chapter eight soon. Make sure to like, share and subscribe so that you know when I post it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, ta-da.